Hey everybody, I'm Derek Solomon. I'm Ryan Solomon. A king adder was just spotted on the lakefront in Milwaukee. And we're gonna go see if we can find it out there. So come join us on this episode of Badgerland, Badgerland Birding. Birding. With the eastern edge of Wisconsin bordered by Lake Michigan, several rare birds find their way into the large body of water each year. Many of them are found just off the coast of major cities such as Milwaukee. Even so, it was unexpected for an eider to be found so far south on the lake. While king eiders are regularly found in their arctic breeding ground and show up on the northern part of the east coast during winter, they are a rarity in the Great Lakes. This made it a big deal when one was found on Lake Michigan. While the eider could have come from as far north as Canada or even the Arctic Circle, we had just a 30 minute drive to Milwaukee. During that drive, it became obvious that the themes of the day would be traffic and Milwaukee landmarks. So here in Wisconsin, it always seems like something's under construction. Black Friday traffic. Uh, you'll see the State Fair Park. Here's Miller Park coming up. There's Discovery. Summerfest grounds. Milwaukee Art Museum. We're going to pass by Collectivo on the left, and then McKinley Marina on the right, and then we'll pass McKinley Beach on the right, and then we'll pass Bradford Beach on the right. And then I think this bird is supposed to be seen out North Point. We're going to see if the black scoters are around. Our first stop of the day was at North Point, where the eider was last seen. There had also been reports of a group of black scoters there. Although we didn't see either, we were rewarded with our first seabird of the day. Bufflehead. The bufflehead is the smallest of all North American sea ducks. The male has a white body with a dark head and back, with a distinct white triangle on the back of the head. The female looks similar, but with a white patch on the cheek. Each year, the female returns to the site of her birth, nesting in an old woodpecker hole, and laying one egg each morning for 6 to 11 days. But just still, there's another male tucked in. Males and females were both frequently diving for food. And a female. I think we'll have to go a little bit farther north. We're going to check out this group behind these trees. Could be the black scoters. Black scoters are an annual Wisconsin migrant, usually arriving in late autumn and occasionally overwintering. Their common range during breeding months is Alaska and northern Canada, but they migrate as far south as the Gulf of Mexico with a migratory path directly over the Great Lakes. In winter, females and juveniles gather in flocks while many of the males winter separately. Males are black with an orange knob at the base of the bill. Females are brown with a dark cap and pale face, sometimes being mistaken for ruddy ducks. Even though they aren't considered rare for this time of year, we were still happy to find them. It's a life bird for me. I've never seen black scoters. It's like a chain reaction. So we're gonna head down further and see if we can find the eider. Found the group of black scoters, which is closer than it was the other day, apparently. Which is the first time I've ever seen them, so I'm pretty pumped to see those. There's also some gold out here, too. Haven't seen any good ones yet, though. Just the standard stuff. And they're still nice. The ring-billed gull was once thought to be the most common gull in North America, dubbed by John James Audubon himself as the Great American Gull. It is easily identified by the black ring around its bill, and smaller size compared to the equally common herring gull. The ring-billed gull is found year-round on the coast of the Great Lakes. While scanning the lake, we noticed another common winter species, the greater scop. While there were just a few on the water today, they will be much more frequent when the lake starts to freeze over and the birds make their way down south from Canada and Alaska. Males have a white wing, gray back, and dark blue head, 
while females are varying shades of brown with a white face. Near the scop, we also notice some mergansers. Also known as the sea robin, the red-breasted merganser flocks in the thousands on the Great Lakes during the winter months. It is easily identified by its spiky crest. Males have a greenish head, while females have a reddish-brown head. While I was looking at the mergansers, Ryan thought he spotted the eider. You think you got it? Where? I think it might be... The left? Half the left one? Head, yeah. I mean, that one looks bigger than the others, don't you think? Yeah, but I don't know what the others are yet. Okay. Wow, these buffalo heads are really nice and close. I don't know, that looks eider shaped, doesn't it? With very little wave action, we were able to get our first glimpse at the bird that we believe to be the king eider. How do you know? So I think we found it, but it's really far out. After getting a bit closer to the water's edge, we were able to confirm that this was in fact the bird we were looking for. The king eider is a two on the ABA rarity scale. Far from its home in the Arctic, this female seemed happy to float along while occasionally searching for food, including mollusks, insects, fish, and crustaceans. King eiders have been known to dive down as far as 180 feet, literally flying underwater to reach depths that their competitors cannot. The female is medium brown with a dark bill and dark U-shaped markings on the body. Some females have a pale spot on the face near the bill. In addition, a faint pale line extending behind the eye down the neck is present in females. The males are much more extravagant, with a distinct orange frontal lobe, red bill, and pale blue neck. The body is black with white on the chest and hip. While it never came too close, it did drift into shore far enough for us to get some decent looks. After seeing the bird, I had some mixed emotions. Well, we saw it, but it was pretty far away. We got some decent looks. I wish we got some better pictures or videos. But either way, we saw it, which is really cool, because uh, it's pretty rare. Uh, I'd love to see a male someday. It was a successful day, though. We're on our way back. It's freezing. My hands are so cold. Uh, but we found some mallards over here by Bradford. The mallard is the most abundant duck species in North America and is the ancestor of almost all domestic duck breeds. The females are known to make the standard quacking noise that most people associate with ducks. Looking at the mallards, we heard the call of a bird we didn't expect to see. It's a kinglet, I think, in there. It's a golden, right? Yeah, golden crown kinglet. I don't know where he went to now, but I hear him. He's over here. Golden crown kinglets are one of the smallest birds in Wisconsin. Identified by their high-pitched call, greenish appearance, and bright yellow crown, these birds migrate through in both spring and fall, but the majority of them are gone by November. After a successful day at the lakefront, we decided to stop by nearby Lake Park to see if there were any more lingering migrants. While there were plenty of gray squirrels, all that we could find were a couple of Wisconsin's common feeder visitors. One such bird is a black-capped chickadee. Named for its distinctive call, chickadees can easily be found in Wisconsin year-round. Another bird we found near the feeders was a dark-eyed junco. To many birders, their arrival signals that winter is coming. Males and females are both a darker slate color on most of their body, with a lighter underbelly. With dark clouds approaching, we saw our last bird of the day, the white-breasted nuthatch. Nuthatches can be seen flying to and from feeders, taking seeds and pounding them into trees to save for later. Oh, he's cute. After seeing a variety of different types of birds, we decided to head in and call it a day. We managed to go out and see the bird we were looking for. It was pretty far away, but it's still really cool to see such a rare bird. 
Plus on days like this, you're not gonna see a whole lot of birds all the time, so it's definitely a quality over quantity experience. Thanks again for coming with us, and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, I feel like Bigfoot. <laughs>